Nobody can move way on the road to progress. We must tread. This labor pride we can't lose it. So now we fight them with love, win them with love, beat them with love. We moving forward. Shine bright, and I have a message for the youth. Yeah, victory is coming December 9th. Time 
than ever. We come in, in stronger than ever. I said, Fuck! Shine bright, and I have a message for them youth, yeah. Victory is coming December 9, so now we fight them with love, win them with love, meet them with love, we moving forward. Nobody can move way on the road to progress. We must try to fix the labor pride. We can't lose it. So now we fight them with love, win them with love, beat them with love. We moving forward. Shine bright, and I have a message for the mute, yeah. Victory is coming December 9th. It's 
and fill with sun up and shine bright. And I have a message for them youth, yeah. Victory is coming December 9. So now we fight them with love, win them with love, beat them with love. We moving forward. Nobody can move way on the road to progress. We must try to fix labor pride. We can't lose it. So now we fight them with love, win them with love, beat them with love. We moving forward. Shine bright, and I have a message for the mute. Yeah, victory is coming December 9th.
stronger than ever. We come in, in stronger than ever. Okay, I say, fuck Nation of 
Time for we stand up and shine bright. And I have a message for them youth, yeah. Victory is coming December 9th. So now we fight them with love, win them with love, beat them with love. We're moving forward. Nobody can move way on the road to progress. We must try to slave our pride. We can't lose it. So now we fight them with love, win them with love, beat them with love. We're moving forward. Shine bright, and I have a message for the youth. Yeah, victory is coming December 9th.
stronger than ever. We come in, in stronger than ever. I said, fuck! I 
appreciative of your time that you spent with us and for that we don't take for granted and that we don't take for granted. I want to say tonight that we are a bit late and we want to apologize for that. However, this meeting will be filled with information and surely the next gen SKN is the best option going forward in St. Kitts and Nevis. And so tonight we are here and we want to start off um, by introducing our first speaker. But before we get there, we want to say to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis that this whole COVID-19 has been used for some sort of political advantage by the incumbent by the incumbent party here, the concoction. They really want to use it to their political advantage to win the next election because they know that they were losing very badly and they continue to lose. I want to assure our people that the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party has been very adaptive in dealing with this COVID-19 issue and campaigning. We are out on the road, but a lot of our efforts were being stifled by this government, telling us that we can't go out and give people food while they were trying to be on the street, telling us that we had to come in at a particular time while they wanted to be out there all night. And therefore, we are saying that this type of treatment is something that we will not accept. And so the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party will be out there meeting the people at their doors, giving them the relevant information, and not allowing itself to be stifled by the action of a vindictive leader, an impartial leader, a partial leader, one who wants to stay in power by any means necessary and all costs. He really wants to be the captain of the ashes, or the king of the ashes, so to speak. And so tonight, we want to start our meeting by introducing our first speaker. And our first speaker will be introduced by an endorsement video by Leon Natter Nelson. Let's go forward. Politics has always and will always be the slogan of Mr. Nelson. 
Anyone will have a representative that cares for all the people and not just selected families and friends. So on the 5th of June, I pass my ballot votes and do this with full confidence in my champion and your champion, Mr. Leon Nathan Nelson. Good night, good night to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Good night to you, the people, the wonderful people of constituency number seven. And of course, a pleasant good night to our wonderful citizens in the diaspora. This is yours, one and only, Leon Winning Nathan Nelson. Again with you tonight as part of our next gen SKN virtual public meeting. So I say to you one more time, a pleasant good night to you all as we are celebrating the end of what we know to be the end of a corrupt nepotistic government of Timothy Harris. I hope that I am greeting you in a very happy and festive mood as we are celebrating also the beginning, the new beginning of next gen SKN in St. Kitts. A new beginning for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Tonight, I want to again reassure and reaffirm to the people of Constituency 7 that I am the man that is going to take constituency number seven. Constituency number seven and all its constituents. The way forward is with me. The way forward in number seven is with yours and truly. But again, I want to present to you and reaffirm to you of some of these plans to develop the constituency. 
And so I start off by saying, with one of the most fundamental and critical aspects to our needs in St. Kitts and Nevis, and in, in my constituency, is housing. My aim is to commit to build 250 houses in my first term. 250 homes. That is about 10 times more than what Timothy have built in five years. 10 times more. And so more family, 10 times more families will get an opportunity to shelter themselves and provide for their families. And as I said before, I am committed to starting this housing revolution in Phillips Village, where Phillips Village was abandoned by Timothy Harris over 26 years, building only eight houses in 26 years. That is a real travesty to the people of Phillips Village. And walk my way all the way down to Bellevue, where he has only built three houses in 30 years. And so my commitment to you also comes with the understanding that having a new home may bring some financial difficulties or having you to change your financial plans because you're now owning a piece of the rock. And so it is only as a part as your parliamentary representative, I would want to give to you the assurance of something in that house to ease you, to ease the squeeze and give you a good start. So that house will be complemented with the fridge or a stove or a washing machine or a new bed set so that you can have some amenities when you move in that house. But you've heard me say that before. So let me add also another facet of these housing situation, solutions. I will ensure that there's a three to six months moratorium payment period so that while you make the adjustment um, to your financial arrangement, three to six months is when you will find yourself living in your house and then making that first payment as you make that adjustment to your life, living in a brand new home under the next gen SKN. The second phase I want to touch is agriculture. Like Dr. Joe, I myself, understanding that most of the agriculture that is occupied or done in St. Kitts and Nevis is on the eastern side of the country that stretches from St. Peter's all the way down to Capis Tier Farm. And so to facilitate the farmers on this side, I am committed to building a brand new facility in Bowie or Christchurch area. A facility that will be complemented with an aperture, a, a, a market, a, a facility that would provide supply, feed, and other materials to the farmers, vertical, and all the other requirements for farming. This is to ensure that farming is developed on the eastern side. This is to ensure that food security is of minimal concern going forward. Mm -hmm. So we must understand the nature and the importance of this proactive and innovative thinking to assist farmers on this side. But most of all, as I've said before, when you add 250 homes to this constituency, when you strategically develop agriculture on the verge of climate change, we must consider, we must think of the water supply. That is a fundamental need to every household and across all agricultural sector. Water supply. So it is my aim to ensure that the water catchment in Phillips is and around the constituency is improved so that over the next 20, 25 years, mm -hmm. we do not have the same problem as they have in Kayon under Eugene Hamilton. So the constituents can look and rely on me that water supply should not, should not be disrupted under my watch. I want to say to the people of Mansion that an opportunity of employment and business shall come, excuse me, shall come your way. At the mansion sliding, we shall develop a duty-free sector. A duty-free sector that will give the same concept of Port Zante, where we have different shops providing, whether it's class A stuff, where you sell souvenirs and t-shirts and so on, or class B, where we sell uh, liquor and tobacco, the food court, this will be the new tourist attraction in constituency number seven. And I'm sure the people of Mansion 
and mm -hmm. other areas of this constituency are looking for new and creative ways to get employment, new and creative ways to get businesses. And this definitely will bring that opportunity to their doorstep. Of course, you've heard me mention several times. My intention is to put a car race trap in Tabernacle. This is not just a recreational facility. Car racing is a new trend that is rising in St. Kitts and Nevis. And so this will provide, again, opportunities for jobs, providing concession stands at the facility, providing um, other alternatives to host events at that facility. This facility also, we will have uh, premier events around music festival, around independence, around Christmas and carnival time. And this as well will form part of that overall tourism product. Look at what Canvas is going to do with the cultural uh, avenue in, in, in West Bastia. Look at what Steve is going to do in number four with the heritage site. Look at what Dr. Joe is going to do in St. Peter's at Sofa Stone. Look at what Leon Nathan Nelson is going to do at the Mansion Sliding. Look at what Leon Nathan Nelson is going to do in Tabernacle with the car rating strap. This is going to be a new form of tourism product that we can sell St. St. Nevis on that will bring new tourists to our, our shores. It's not going to be the same St. Kitts over and over. It's going to be a new St. Kitts and Nevis. And so we, the next gen SKN, and in particular number seven, will be will bring new ideas and new concept, new concept, new opportunities to the people of number seven and more. Of course, we are going to upgrade the sporting facilities in Atlas. It is the most used sporting facility in the community. When we have the uh Violet Petit Primary, Primary School, and most of the football matches that are played in Class 27 are on Alice Field. So we are going to ensure that that field gets a substantial upgrade. And also the Edgar Gilbert Sporting Complex in Molyneux, where sometimes we have track and field meets. The Molyneux, the Joshua Abidaya Primary School meet is on the Molyneux field, and the children have no place to go to a bathroom facility on the ground. We will change that. We will ensure that the Molyneux facility, the Edgar Gilbert facility, is upgraded substantially. But this other initiative that I'm going to ensure that happens in number seven is like my brainchild. I, I think very dearly of it. It's a program that I call the Graduate Incentive Program. And how that program works, any child that graduates from a school within number seven and goes on to graduate from any high school, I will provide, as long as I am the parliamentary representative, $500 to that person, that child. That $500 is to encourage them to finish what they have started. Encourage them to finish. Don't drop out of high school. The parliamentary representative for your area is waiting at, your, at the end of the line so that you could be rewarded with some sort of help for your future endeavorment. If you're going to work, you have $500 to buy your clothes to go to work. If you're going out to CFBC, you have $500 to give your head start. But you must be complete. Uh, you must complete your studies. That's all, that is all that I'm asking. It doesn't matter where you finish. As long as you finish, you will be, you will be rewarded. And if you go on to CFBC and you graduate from CFBC, I am saying, I will be at the end of the line waiting for you and give you some assistance in $750. So there you have it. I am looking for you from the start to the finish. And so that is one of my, 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 my closest and my dearest um, commitments to you, the people of number seven. Because when you look at it, the laptop program has stopped. We will bring that back. And I also will ensure that a generator is at every school so that education is not interrupted when there is a power loss. We are going to the new phase of technical education, I mean, 
technological education. Had we had our laptops in schools today, education would have been continued smoothly. But I am saying, as long as the schools are there, I will have a backup generator at each school so that if current has left us, a power is up, power outage is upon us. The children can have their laptops going still. The teachers can have whatever facilities at the school going still. I will ensure that education continues smoothly throughout my constituency. And whenever my students graduate, they shall be rewarded. They shall be encouraged. They shall be helped. And they shall be assisted. But that is my plan. That is my plan for this constituency. And the man who is there for 26 to 30 years has brought nothing, nothing to the people of number seven to say to them, what is it that he will do to, in the next five years? The only thing, and he can't go on a track record, you know. He cannot go on a track record of his last five years or his previous 26 years. He can't go on a track record because his track record of previous shows nothing but nepotism and corruption. Those are facts. That is the only thing that he has demonstrated to us over the last five years. In fact, they don't care about the people of number seven. If you look at what is going on right now, Len Harris, his brother, have not spent any time in number seven offering anything to the youths and people of number seven. You can find him in St. Peter's. You can find him in number three. You can find him in number one. Offering loan, giving us out of concession, but nothing for the people of number seven. Nothing for the young man then. Huh? But yet he's up and down. We are not the priority of the houses over here. As a matter of fact, Timothy the house doesn't have any time for the people of number seven. He sends his subordinates around to ask him, uh, Mr. Harris say I must ask you what he could do for you. After five years, you ain't get a house in 30 years. You ain't get a house in 15 years. He only built 28 houses in five years. And he's starting to ask, Mr. Harry said, what well, I, I could do for you. That is so insulting to the people of number seven. Huh? That is so insulting to the people of number seven. But look at what he has done. He has discredited and abandoned the people of number seven. I could recall the inspector Isles, who lives in Phyllis Village, was demoted on her wedding day. Demoted on her wedding day. And he said that is a, the best gift he could give to her. Disrespect, I could recall the last election in 2015. It was, it was as if the operation of Timothy Harris was at the Benjamin's bar, uh, Benjamin's uh, Zyker's bar in Hartley's. I could recall that, but all of a sudden, the last five years, the sky is the limit. The sky is the limit and forget Forget who put him there, just like how he have done to all the constituencies. Forget who put him there, but that is the nature of the man. That is the nature of the man. How he should not be able to come to anyone and ask them for a vote again for his track record over the last five years. Because over the last five years, you have heard nothing but corruption, nepotism. You have seen nothing but his family advance. You have seen nothing but his families and big jobs and all the bank boards and all the different boards across St. Kitts and Nevis. Where have your family gotten an opportunity from? Where some of you are at the same position and most of you are at the same position when Timothy took over from 95 to 2000 to 2020, you are at the same place or even worse. Same place. So he cannot and he should not come to you to ask you for a vote again. So but the people of number seven, should you want to advance yourself, you have something to look forward to. I have demonstrated to you, I have said to you that these are just a small part of the plans to develop number seven. And when I say number seven, I mean every household in number seven. So you have to make a choice, a choice and principle, a choice and your future. 
that you want to go further, that the constituency need to go further. But if you want to stay where you are, Timothy is the man for you. If you want to advance yourself in life, advance your family, I am the man for you. I am the man for you, but I am saying the writing is on the wall. If you listen to the years, if you put your ears to the people of number seven, the writing is on the wall. I have presented a plan for you forward. Timothy has brought nothing. The only thing Timothy has brought is nepotism and an argument against Douglas. But on 5th of June, you will see my name on that paper next to the hand. And to secure your future, I'm asking you kindly. I'm asking you wisely to put the X next to the, next to the finger and guarantee your future with Leon Nutter. Guarantee your future with Leon Nutter. Timothy has brought nothing to you. He sends his scouts to come and ask you, what do you want? I come myself and say to you that I will deliver everything that I have said there and more to the people of number seven. So I say to you, I am looking to be your humble servant. A, your humble servant with leadership, with ideas, and most of all, with love. So I say to you, on the 4th of June, as I said to my, all my constituents, on the 4th of June, I ask you, by the time 12.01 at midnight, to commit to voting for Leonard Nelson. So on the 5th day of June, 2020, you go straight to the polls with no hesitation and vote for your future. Vote for Leon Nata Nelson. Every vote matters. You matters. God bless. Love you. Good night. Leon Nata, your representative in number seven. Thank you. Thanks for life. Oh, chimney, chimney. Uh. Today, my rise like the sunrise, my bright and my upright. No one can break my vibes. I may not care who I fight, I know I criticize. I'm on the higher heights. So you can say what you want to and do what you want to, it's no concern to me. I call me up more and vision, me depth on more and mission to rule my destiny. Oh, it's my day to do anything I want to. It's my time, and I'll use it any way I want to. It's my life, and I'm responsible for every action. It's all. Good night. Once again, I want to thank Conrad Leonetta for such an erudite presentation. I think he pointed out the fact that the constituency number um, for um, representative for constituency number seven, that he has not delivered what he said he would deliver to the people. And Leon has let out a plan for you, the people of constituency number seven, a comprehensive plan, a progressive plan, a next gen SKN plan. And as I talk about plans, I want to say one thing here. I have a plan here from Eugene Hamilton from 2015. And I'm going to go to eight district in my constituency and read out what he said he would deliver. Since he was on radio and he was speaking about St. Peter's, I'm going to say the major promises that he made to the people of St. Peter's. And they go like this. The first one, support greenhouse agriculture. The greenhouses were built under program during the labor administration. And when this government came into power, all the greenhouses were damaged during the hurricanes of 2017 and not one of them was repaired by the government. So that is a failure for support greenhouse agriculture. It is in shambles and the St. Kitts Navy's Labor Party will rekindle that excellent program. The other one he said was encourage community-based enterprise. Hardly to none 
we are um, to know new businesses we can find in the constituency. And least of all, St. Peter's. Again, a failure. He said, we established Bearfords as a farm. The last time I checked, there is no farm that they have we established in Bearfords. It continues to run wild. Again, a failure. And construct a bypass road linking St. Peter's and St. Mary. Those were the major promises by Eugene Hamilton. None of them fulfilled for the people of St. Peter's. A failure. And that is why the people of St. Peter's are saying it's time for Eugene Hamilton to go because he has not delivered. But comrades, let's move on tonight. And we are moving on to constituency number one. And in constituency number one, we have the good shepherd, the man who is with you, the people of constituency number one. He's way ahead because he has always been ahead, because he has always been with the people. And this election is no different. He continues to be with the people. And he has really outpaced and outmatched the cement candidate. And he has proven to the people that he's all about you. Help me to bring to the podium in this massive virtual meeting, the next representative for constituency number one, comrade, Dr. Jeffrey Hanley. Help me to welcome him. Some cry, some smile, some fight every day. We rise to the top, cause we know what it takes. Through it all, we survive, yet still hold the faith. Unchangeable, Lord, unchangeable, hey. No matter how the dollar might stack up, me still not change me, I go stay rough. Now the giddy and your off you buckle up your lace, be smart, don't be a cuff now, no. Life is a journey, it's a long race. Mama says, son, be wise and don't bring disgrace. So me take up the broom and start sweep the place. Cause all these ways they got. My good people of East Bass here, I say a pleasant good evening to each tonight. Those of you listening via the social media, a pleasant good evening to you and welcome to yet another virtual meeting. I'm not going to be long before you, but I just bring you greetings from East Bastia and bring the reassurance that we are number one in number one. But comrades of labor and the good people listening tonight, I want to take this opportunity to thank His Excellency Sam Condor for his endorsement today, as he would have indicated that he will be supporting me. Sir, I was moved and I am happy for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ambassador Condor. Comrades, 15 days to go before the victory. I say to you tonight, comrades, do not get weary great shall be our reward. Comrades, let us continue to be prayerful and watchful time. We must remain focused, comrades. We cannot afford to be distracted at this time. It's going to come in all forms. Post the war, but we are not going to lose focus, my dear people. Those cannot vote. My people, 
come words of labor. This is one of the most serious elections that we will be having on June 5th. I ask you, all of our labor supporters, not, even, not only in East Bastia, but throughout the entire country, this is an election where every one of you must go to the polls. Regardless of what you might be thinking or what might have been happening to you, this is a time that you must go to the polls. This is a time your country needs you most. This is a time when your party is expecting you to bring home a victory for the Senkates Nevis Labour Party. East Marcia, I remind you that our vote is not for sale. They'll be coming around with all sorts of things after knocking you about for the past five years. They don't want to think that you are fools and will buy into their thinking that they can buy you out. We're not doing that in East Marcia. We will remain focused and steadfast and unmovable and unshakable. And on June 5th, I'm asking all of you to go to the polls and vote for Jeffrey Hanley and give me that opportunity to serve you. Vote for the hand, the helping hand, my people. Young people, let me just remind that no one will know who you are voting for. No matter what they say to you, they don't know who you are voting for. Your vote is between you and your God. Don't allow them to intimidate you. When you go in that polling station, you vote for your conscience and you vote for the hand. The hand that help you. In wrapping up, my dear people, East Bastia, I am with you. I am the best choice. I am more caring, more innovative, more approachable. My people, comrades of labor, I am not ignorant. I have never participated in any form of corruption or dishonor. I would not have wasted $150 million on a cool spear. I know they are saying that there are evidence or signs of crack on the pier. Waste of money. East Bastia, hope is on its way. I will speak life back into East Bastia. East Bastia, I give you the assurance that we will smile again. My dear people, vote all eight candidates on June 5th. I love you. I love you. I love you. Good night, my good people. Good night. Some cry, some smile, some fight every day. We rise to the top, cause we know what it takes. Through it all we survive, yet still hold the faith. Unchangeable, Lord unchangeable. Hey. No matter how the dollar might stack up, me still not change me, I go stay rough. In a diggy and your offy buckle up your lace, be smart, don't be a cuff, no, no. Life it's a journey, it's a long race. Mama says, son, be wise and don't bring disgrace. So me take up the broom and start sweep the place. Cause all these ways they got to get erased. I 
And love to me people that me embrace The truth are the truth and I can't erase So hell to all of those who want hate Just send me to finish this race So we ain't giving up now We put up a fight We got to be ready Cause time's getting dreaded Just said don't you Thank you to Dr. Jeffrey Henley, candidate for constituency number one. And as usual, he has presented his case tonight. And one of the things that he mentioned was about the peer, the peer that was hurriedly built for an election. And he has said that the peer has cracks in it. And I think that the government needs to come to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis and tell them what is the state of the peer since over $100 million were invested in that peer. But it shows, therefore, that the man who's at number, who's in number one, he had patches like that he has no ideas, no constructive plans, really, for that constituency or within his ministry. Let us remember that there was a downgrade of our airport under the watch of Patches Liburn. We all know that he was the one who walked through airport security, violating all protocols. And therefore, that must have been a factor in downgrading our airport, which would have tremendous impact on our tourism industry. And that is why we are saying it is time for Patches to go and for Jeffy to step into that constituency. Um, let's move on. We have an endorsement for our candidate from constituency number four, Steve for sure in number four. Let's enjoy. Today, constituency four needs strong leadership to ensure that our constituents have sustainable livelihoods. Mr. Steve Rensford has countlessly demonstrated his ability to lead as he remains actively involved in his constituency and continues to inspire many. And that is why as a young person, I am endorsing Mr. Steve Rensford as he is a leader who is focused, goal-oriented and committed. Let us rally our support for H.E. Steve Rensford and the Next Gen SKN team. now the next representative for constituency number four who will be his excellency steve Wensford, an honest man a dedicated man a man who is not caught in any scheme or ponzi scheme a man who has not been charged and found by any court to have stolen anybody's money the question that i have for the people of constituency number four if you have a representative who has misappropriated his client's fund, what do you think he's doing with our money? And therefore, that is why we are saying Steve for sure in number four. Let's introduce Steve. An election day, hear yeah, what I say. An election day. What I say, we vote in Steve, on election day, we vote in Steve, on election day, we jam in with Steve, we push in for Steve, we vote in for Steve, Steve, Steve. Good night, comrades, good night to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, good night to those in the diaspora. 
special good night for the constituents or constituency number four. And a special good night to the young man who just gave the endorsement. Young man who is a um, talented, intelligent guy, and a guy who will do good in the Labour administration after the 5th of June. Once a good night to those, uh, to those in Miami and St. Thomas and my good friend Kenny in Taiwan. Um, comrades and citizens of St. Kitts we have seen that this present administration has now begun the scare tactics. But I want to assure them that we are labor strong and we stand tall and sustain so our posters and spreading false rumors and sending all kind of nonsensical scare tactics will not scare us. It will only make us stronger and we are more determined that this government will change comes the 5th of June. I want our people to stay focused. I want our people to stay alert, be vigilant. And I want our people to understand that the future of St. Kitts and Nevis is in your hands. So I want you to come out to vote and to come out early so that by the end of the morning, all of us will know that the St. Kitts and Nevis Labour Party would have returned all eight candidates to be in the government. We have suffered five years under this vindictive and cronyism government, a government full of nepotism, a government full of spite and hate and malice, a foretaught for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis who doesn't support them. And so I say to you tonight, we demand good representation. And so it is in your hands that good representation comes because all eight candidates of the St. Kitts Needed Labour Party next gen team, the dream team, will bring that to you. I want you to vote for a party that has vision, drive, competence, and innovation. A party that is for you, the people. Vote Labour, vote Next Gen SKN. We will bring St. Kitts to number one again in practically all facets of rating. I want you in constituency number four to consider your choice. Recall Lindsey Grant has been on our doorstep for a number of years. In 2010, he was the leader of PAM. He was caught in a scandal. He called those who rebelled against him the Gang of Six. So he was forced to resign as leader. And that is why Sean Richard became a leader. And now his traits, his ingrained traits have continued. But he got elected in 2015. But yet, before he got elected, he was scheming, misappropriating client funds. And so tonight, I want to say to you, the people, the choice is clear because this guy, this guy who is about himself, who loves other people's money, he is not for you. He is not for you. And I want you to ask yourself, what advancement you have made under this government? Are you better off today as you are compared to 2015 when you change the government? The answer is clear. The answer is clear, and so you must vote. Your conscience, whether you're PAM or unity, you must do it for your children. You must do it for yourself. And so I want to say to you, let us look at the, uh, the economy. The economy, as it is before the COVID-19 pandemic, was flat. We were going into a, a, a depression, a recession. And what happened? COVID came, make it worse. But I said to you, a new next-gen SKN Labour Party administration will ensure that no man, no woman, no child, will get left behind because it's all about that our people must now rise 
and whatever the prosperity agenda that the Labour Party has, that no one will be left behind. You understand that we have been a champion for your cause over the past year. So the plans that we have are very clear. They are clear and intended to make you better off, to make you achieve your goals and aspirations. Grant has been a ghost in constituency for over the last one and a half years. All of a sudden, he has shown up. He has shown up because it is election. And now he comes to you, asking you for, he, for your vote. This afternoon, I was in Challengers with some young men. And they said they had a meeting prior to, I, to my arrival. And they would have said something that they would have said to him. But they have said to me clearly that he has fooled them. And they have not been better off by giving him the choice. And so they have asked me that they would want to put their trust in me because the way I speak, the way I think about the constituency, they want to take the chance and say, you go forward and make us better off. And I assure the young men, and I assure all, all and sundry in constituency number four, that once and when I'm elected, you are assured that you will get your piece of the pie. Labor has always been a driving force of economic advancement in St. Peter's. And so with all this talent now in this, this team, imagine what we are going to do to move St. and Nevis forward economically. I want to remind you, we started the housing revolution. We provided numerous jobs, opportunities for many persons. There was an influx of small businesses. And I want to say to you, imagine when we get back in, the number of small businesses will quadruple because Many young persons I have spoken to are interested in starting their own business so they can be independent, be self-employed, and control their own movement in life. We have also assisted numerous families in acquiring the means to raise their socioeconomic status under Labour Administration. We have done that, and we will continue to do that. We have provided scholarships to numerous persons allowing them the opportunity to advance, not only themselves, but their families. These are only a few of the great things Labour have done, has done over the past years. And so I said to you, we did it before, we're going to do it again. In constituency number four, there are great plans for the people of constituency number four. The young men who are recounting the history of the of the constituency this afternoon. And I was very impressed with them because they said to me, I don't have any degree. I am not a, a scholar, but I have common sense. I know what my constituency is worth in terms of the history. And it is time that we start to earn from the history of our constituency. And that fits perfectly within the plan for the heritage site and the utilization of all the historic artifacts in our constituency to generate employment and to help uplift our people. And so I said to you, we are going to have a no tax zone. A no tax zone will allow the young people to earn business. We will help them. We will help them to be, to be stable and so that they can go to the teething period and that our people will rise and they will be empowered. The Borchardt High School we will renovate to make sure it is of, of class, of class. We make sure it's air conditioned. And Leon mentioned about having um, generators there. And yes, that, that will be there also. Uh, we come to the Borchardt playing field. That will be upgraded. I'm seeing that now they are hustling to install lights. There's no plan. And so I said to you, Virtual playing field will be upgraded to a stadium. So all the hustling are putting lights and putting them in the wrong places and reducing the, the access of the field and so on, that will be, be of the past. They are going to do something that where the people will benefit and different parts of the sporting arena 
will be also included in that statement. So if you know the plants are great, you need to enjoy it. So come on board. Make sure you are part of the train that is leaving for greatness, for economic greatness, for economic wealth, for your own empowerment. We will do that on the labor. I say to you, labor will take our federation to the next level, next gen scan level, never seen in this federation before. I'm saying to you, all eight of us are rearing and ready to go. We're just waiting for June 5th, when you make a resounding choice and saying, yes, next gen SKN, let's move forward. And like I said to you, when I went to the Air and Challengers, the guy said, okay, and next gen has come. Next gen, it is, it is now part of the mantra, part of the, the rhetoric that is reverberating in the Federation, not unity. Next gen. I said to you as I wrap up here, the constituency number four will become, and I've said it from the start of my advent here on the platform, it will become the next economic hub of the Federation. It will be a model and all other constituencies will feed off us. We have Vincent Hill, we have Challengers, Bloody River, we have Old Road, the first landing site, so, so Thomas Warner in Middle Island. We have it, being a few businesses, well structured, well orchestrated, and we will be great. So number four, you have a man, Clyde Steve Renslow, the man for you, who will make sure that number four rise and be a model in the Federation. Look at the young people who have considered my platform and look at what they are saying. Look at them, young, vibrant, bright young people. They will be part of my administration. They will be bringing out the, those activities for the youth. So we are well placed. The Labour Party is well placed and we have the plans. And so I say to you, fear not, hold forth. Don't take on the escape tactics because all of us, all eight of us are here to ensure that we win this election. And you will ensure that also. So as I said, bid you good night. I want all of you to continue to stay safe, to continue practicing good hygiene and to be ready to exercise that voting finger because it is the finger that will make the next gen SKN, the Labour Party, the government, and St. and Nevis, number one again. Thank you, good night, and God bless you. God bless us all. Thank you. On election day, hear what I say. On election day, hear what I say. We vote in CCC. On election day, we vote in CCC. On election day, we jam in with steam. We push in for C. We vote in. One for we, Steve, 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 the man for the community, Steve, 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 only leader in here. People in this say we vote in Steve anyway. People in this say we vote in Steve all the way. We jam in with Steve, we push in for Steve, we vote in. Steve once again for such a profound presentation and his presentations are always filled with substance. You know what is painful is that you have somebody like Steve who is dedicated hard working. I've told people that Steve is a very hard worker, does a significant amount of work. He's honest, and he wants what is best for the people in the constituency. But on the other hand, you have a man by the name of Lindsey Grant, who has demonstrated time and time again 
that he cannot be trusted. He was caught in a sting operation at Marriott, where he wanted to sell our land if he were elected. And again, the court has found him in another situation for misappropriation of clients' fund. What more do we need? How much more evidence do we need that Lindsey Grant cannot be trusted? What more do we need? How can we send him back to the parliament? What is he doing with our money? Or what has he been doing with our money? And that is why I'm saying to the people of constituency number four that Steve is the better of the candidates. Steve is a good candidate and will make a great representative to vote for Steve in constituency number four. Let's move on now to constituency number two. We're in number two, we have the royal lady. And I've said time and time again that she has done so much and I encourage her to put it out there, let people see what she would have done. But she has always come under tremendous attack. And when they cannot beat her, they resort to all sorts of what I call guerrilla warfare political tactics, such as trying to burn, in, to burn down her campaign office during the last election cycle, such as tearing down her boards to remove her presence in terms of visual from the constituency. But no matter what they do or try, the Honorable Marcella Libel continues to come out on top. And this election is no different because the man or the person who she's running against, he too cannot be trusted. Not by word of mouth, but because the court has said it. The court has said that he has misappropriated his client's fund. He cannot be trusted. What will he do with our money? And so he should not be elected to parliament. He should not even be a candidate in the first place. But only in St. Christopher, where strange things happen, that those who claim to be the most honest and upright and go by all the rules of good governance are those who are found by the court of law, an independent body, that they have misappropriated their client's fund, AKA stolen their client's fund, and still they are standing for office only in St. Christopher. But you, the people, have a chance to change that. Let's bring the next representative to continue a service with love, the Honorable Marcella Liber. Good night, good evening to all who are logged on to this virtual meeting this evening and to all who are listening via radio or the internet. And of course, a very special good evening to the good people of Central Bastia. Tonight, we have the endorsement of three of our candidates. And so I will be very brief to give them the opportunity to tell you what they will present to their various constituencies. I want to begin by welcoming back Sam Kondo, my friend, who today officially broke ranks with the PLP officially and said that he would be supporting the Senkits Nevis Labour Party. Sam, we want to thank you for your support. And I want to say to all of those persons who also voted for the unity construct because they said that they will be for good governance. Many people voted for that, but now the entire country sees that they have been deceived. And so we say, welcome back to all those persons who like Sam thought they were getting good governance, but now realizing that what they've gotten is rank nepotism, shameless 
nepotism, incompetence, corruption, and a government that has sought to destroy all of our statutory bodies and institutions by allowing the boards, the politically appointed boards who are there mainly for politics to run these institutions and put down the professionals. What a sad state of affairs we're having in our statutory bodies and all those other institutions like National Bank that is controlled by the government. The young professionals and the professionals of those institutions are not given a chance because the boards are put there to do the day-to-day -day running, which we know should not be the case, and to keep the workers down while they go on all the trips that they should not be going on. So guess what is happening down at Social Security this week and within the last two weeks? The board has decided to give itself a gratuity of $20,000 to each board member. I want the country to understand that. A decision taken this week to give the board members a gratuity of $20,000. This is a board that has gotten several increases over the time they're there, several increases to their stipends for meetings. So that's two separate increases. The monthly stipend gone up and the stipend for meetings also gone up. And then, this is also important. They have got new contracts which say that they must be paid for two years if the government is changed and they're no longer board members. How much confidence they have, they say they're going to win the election. But the board members have contracts now recently put out to say that you have to pay them for two years if the government changes. But guess what? While they're taking and raking all this money out of Social Security, the people who are supposed to be getting this so-called stimulus, I've spoken to many people in Central Basque and to other constituencies who up to now have not gotten a cent or how they can get the money if the board going with $20,000 gratuity. Recent decision, taking decisions to benefit themselves and to enrich themselves, but that is not new. That's what Harris is doing with his family and his friends, taking decisions to enrich his family and his friends and the board members down at Social Security are doing the same thing. What is sad is the actuary just recently said that Social Security is spending more money than it is taking in. But yet the board will take these reckless self-serving decisions with Social Security money. While the people who have no jobs because of the COVID-19 can't get a cent when they tell them they must go down to social security. And so I said to all the people of Central Bastille and to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, the reason why you have to vote for labor is to protect social security. You have to protect your pensions. Already there are people out there like my friend Malago who's saying he can't get a pension. I had another woman saying to me that for three months now, she can't get her pension from social security, her monthly pension. And so very soon you might find that you can't get your pension or even if you qualify for pension, you can't get it. You may be denied some of the benefits if we don't put a stop to what is happening currently with social security. And so I said to you, vote labor to secure your benefits. All you retirees in Central Bastia, the elderly and those who are about to qualify, you have to think seriously about whether or not your pensions are not in jeopardy. At the rate things are going, I know for sure that your pensions would be in jeopardy. And so you have to vote the Senkins Nevis Labour Party to save your pensions and to save your benefits. So I say to you, vote for Labour. Those of you in Central Bastille, vote for the only candidate you can trust in these elections. That's Marcella Leibold. 
vote for Marcel Leibold in Central Bastille, the only candidate that you can trust in these elections. Vote for the hand. I encourage each and every one of you to go out to vote on election day. There seems to be a little strategy out there to try to dampen the appetite for going out to vote. I said to you, this is a hard fought right that our ancestors fought hard for. Go out and vote on election day. It's secret ballot. You'll be in there, you alone, your conscience and your God. Once you do that, I'm sure you will be directed by your conscience and your God to vote for labor, to end nepotism, to end corruption, and to save your pensions and benefits in social security. Vote for labor. Vote for the hand. Vote for the hand, the caring hand. And in Central Bastille, vote for Marcel Alibod the only candidate that you can trust for the upcoming elections. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the meeting. Good night. For a presentation, one of the things that she spoke about was the Honorable Sam Condor. And Sam Condor has said that he is no longer supporting the unity concoction and that he is going to support Dr. Jeffrey Hanley in constituency number one, he and his family. There is a story that we need to understand, a story, a narrative that is taking place. And that is the foundation of all those who surrounded Timothy Harris in his quest to become prime minister in just one term or less. They have almost all, almost all of them would have left him. Douglas Watley has left. Philip has left. Dwyer Estefan has left. And Sam Condor has left. Well, he said he's not sure if he left or he was thrown out. So they have left Timothy Harris. So those who were close to Timothy Harris and thought that they were getting something better left him in such a short time and is now saying that he is not the cheese that he pretends to be. That the grass are not really greener on the other side. It's all a facade, a mirage, artificial turfing, nothing real about it. So if these gentlemen who stood with him would have left him and now telling us the story, what more evidence do we need than that? That clearly shows that Dr. Timothy Harris is not who he purports to be. He has shown that he cannot be trusted, that he's self-centered, that he's all about himself, self, 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 and family, and the rest of us really are just pawns in his game. And that is why we say we must end nepotism now. Dr. Timothy Harris and his family controls all the levers of power here in St. Kitts and Nevis. They control a big part of the judiciary. 
they control the executive. Then the parliament, they control development bank and the board for social security. Magistrate register and the board for Skellig. In the prison, brother would have been promoted. In the audit, family would have been promoted. His sister is the head of government's payroll. How much more evidence do we need that this man and his family would have taken over St. Kitts and Nevis? Not even, not even Kim Jong-un of North Korea has been so successful as Timothy Harris in putting himself and his family over the whole state. And he does so, Timothy Harris, under the guise of democracy. And that is why I'm saying to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, that for St. Kitts to strive again, to become number one again, we must end the nepotism now and put an end to the Harris regime and the fact that his family members are controlling all the levers of power. Comrades, citizens, all good night. Help me to welcome to the microphone from constituency number five. But we'll have some endorsement videos of our candidate. Thank you. for numerous reasons. These include he's a caring man, he's concerned about every individual that he encounters, he loves to see you succeed, most importantly he is family. Between both Kenny and Sean Richards, who are both family, Mr. Douglas was always around and I am encouraging you to vote for Mr. Douglas. constituency number five. A pleasant good evening, one and all. Good evening to the great people of this constituency, constituency number five, Sandy Point, Pictree, 
and the valley. A pleasant good evening to those who are listening by the way of internet, those who are listening by the way of Kiss FM, Freedom FM, and those persons who are in the diaspora. Welcome to tonight's virtual public meeting of the Next Gen SKN Labor Dream Team. Comrades, find your class. Find your class, comrades, because the elections are here. June 5th, 2020, time to change the change. For my comrades, I want you to know that the heat is on. They are feeling the heat here in constituency number five. I have them going by the breath here in constituency number five. They are defacing my posters here in Sandy Point. They tore down comrade Marcel posters. They destroyed and tore down the posters of my comrade Leon winning Nata Nelson. You know what that means, people? We are stronger than that. We are better than them. And we are poised to win the next general election. Comrades, we are dealing with the facts. We are all about the people of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. I want you to know that the time is now. The time to get rid of them is right now. We have to get rid of Timothy Harris, Sean Richards, and their misfits. The time has come. The time for them to go is now. But I want you to know, comrades, I always feel energized. I'm feeling refreshed. I am red and I ready. I am ready to serve you, the people of constituency number five. We have been waiting patiently for this moment and the time is now. Let us put our campaign in the high gear right now because, because constituency number five is revived. Constituency number five is alive with your truly, Kenneth, David, Kwambo, Douglas. People of constituency number five, Sandy Point, Fiction Valley, I want you to look for full and advancement here in our constituency. I want you to know your next gen Esther and Labour candidate, Kenny Douglas, will provide leadership, leadership for you, the people, of constituency number five. Kenny Douglas is asking you to select me as your next representative for this beloved constituency of number five. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that you will not hear this representative ever say that my hands are tied. I will never ever say that. I will always fight for you. Because as Cat Bill Rogers, who endorsed me a while ago, said, I am a fighter. The lady, Miss Vincent Douglas, told you that Kenny has been always here to the people of Sandy Point, Fiji, and La Valley. So I am saying to you this evening, give Kenny Douglas a chance. Please, I am begging you to give Kenny Douglas a chance to represent you, the people of constituency number five. When you give me the chance to represent you, you will never, ever, ever regret it. As a matter of fact, I want to say to you, when you give me a chance to represent you here in constituency number five, I give myself two to three years to prove my worth to you, the people, because I know, I know that you will have the, the best representation ever in the life of politics here in constituency number five. I told you so many times before that labor has extensive plans for the advancement of our young people of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, for the advancement of the people of our constituency of Sandy Point, Fitchie, and La Valley. I told you how I will provide for you the, uh, the creating performing arts right here in Sandy Point, right here in our Federation. I told you I will build an academy to support arts. So dancers, so graphic artists, musicians, singers, producers will all benefit greatly 
from all of this initiative. We will be providing avenues for you to work, for your work to be seen and heard on a larger scale, both regionally and internationally. I told you that labor will invest in you, the young people, because we realize that you are gifted, you are talented, and we are going to make a priority. I want to know my constituents of constituency number five, that there is so much that we can do for this constituency. I told you how I will build 50 houses each year of my first term in office. 50 times five is 250 in comparison to 24 houses that were built in the five years. I told you that these houses will be equipped with solar energy, solar panels that will lower your electricity bills. I told you that. I told you that low income homeowners will no more, no more have these type of homes that Team Disunity has built. But you will have modernized homes. These homes will be hurricane resistant homes. I told you that before, so I want to just reiterate that. Roads, drains, sewage systems, solid waste disposal, underground electrical wires will be in place even before we start to build these homes for you. I want you to know that the time for you to receive these houses will be cut in half. The waiting process will be shorter. You will have your keys in the matter of quick, quick time. So I want you to know all of this. My people of constituency number five, my people of the Federation of Sankis and Nevis, I told you that I will, I will refurbish both the old and the new stadium here in Sandy Point because I want to have one for football exclusively. The small field down there, the old field, where you will have a state of the art football stadium. I want you to know that inside your stadium will have offices. Inside of that stadium will have um, the, the gymnasium because the people inside the point are crying out for that. I want you to know. I want you to know that our present representative, he told the people he will build a Basie High School and put a race track, he put a track and field track at Basie High School, so very close to the Kim Collins track and field track there. Does that make any sense to have two track and field tracks side by side each other? Charles Emil Secondary School, formerly known as the Sandy Point High School, we have won the track and field championship umpteen of times. I think it is 27 out of 43 times we have won the championship. Instead of our representative tell us here that he will build a proper track and field track here in Sandy Point or just on the outskirts, he is telling us that he will get another one for Basie High School. So they will be having two of them side by side, just a, a stone throw away. We have to let him know that those are poor decisions that he's making. We will make sure that we modernize our stadium with locker rooms, proper bathroom facilities for both players and spectators. We will make sure that the bleachers are surrounding the field to afford comfortable accommodation for our spectators. We will have our meeting, our meeting space to host seminars, workshops to further enhance the knowledge and skills of our athletes or our social groups right here in our facilities. These are the things I told you about our sports academy that we will have right here. And not just the locals will benefit from our sports academy, but persons from the nearby islands also. Our footballers and cricketers and basketballers, you, you can think about that. Think about what you can do with this sports academy. We will make sports more, more um, interesting for you, the people of Sandy Point, for you, the people of Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. I spoke about my involvement in sports, but I don't want you to think that Kenny Douglas will talk only about sports because I want the people of Pompeii to know that I will restore Pompeii to its former glory. Do you remember the days when we used to have family picnics and photo shoots at Pompeii? Do you remember my good people of constituency number five? Imagine that enhance to 10 times over, 10 times over, we can do that for Pompeii. 
we will bring back the pay down the at Pompey. We will bring back the fishermen. So those fishermen will have the refrigerators, the deep freeze, the ice machine, and these things. So when they don't get their fishes sold, that these fishes can be stored right here in our fisheries facility. Fish you will get that their community center. Fish you will get that their ramp so that they can put their boats in the water. Fish you will get that their jetty. These are plans that I, Kenny Douglas, have for the big good people of Pompeii, good people of Fiji, the good people of La Valley. I am a representative who listens to the concerns and adjusts them right here in San Point. I told you that Sean has had 15 years. For the last five years, his office was never up and running. Never up and running. He forgot about the people. He forgot about the persons who put him there. But I want you to know that on June 5th, this day on June 5th, I am asking you for your support. I am asking you for your, for your support by voting for your school, Kenny Douglas, in the upcoming election. Let us change the change. Last election, he stated that the people in Sandy Point only remember their last meal. Their last meal. So he come back with his mantra. He said, no gimmicks and no chicks. But that is exactly what he is working on the good people of Sandy Point, of constituency number five, all of his chicks. That is exactly what he is doing. Don't allow him to cheat you anymore. I want you to place a neat, nice ex by the hand and vote for Kenny Douglas. Make sure that your ex doesn't touch any of those lines. Make sure that you do not spoil the ballots because we need a change. We need better representation right here in Sandy Point. Sandy Point is me and I am Sandy Point. I will forever, forever be here and represent my people in Sandy Point. I will not go to Bird Rock. I will not go to Figgit Bay. I will not go to Martin Lee. I will not journey to all the carnival and all the parties all around the world. I will be right here listening to your concerns, listening to your issues, taking care of your problems because I am you. And you are, are, are the same thing you are, you are I also. I will make sure that I have been a proud Sandy Pointer before politics. And I will even be more proud now as a parliamentary representative of constituency number five. In conclusion, I want to say to your comrades, the Sankis Nevis Labour Party next gen SKNT is ready to serve you. We have rolled out some of our plans that will benefit everyone in the Federation of Sankis and Nevis no matter what your affiliation is. Everything that we do, it is for you because it is all about you, the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. So I want you to be rest assured, labor is here for you. Constituency number five, Kenny Douglas is here for you. On June 5th, do the right thing. Do the right thing, make the right choice and put your ex by the hand. Put your ex constituency number five by your soul, Kenny Douglas. I want to let you know that I, Kenny Douglas, will restore the pride of the people of constituency number five to my people. To my people, I want to remember. Remember this, and I want to leave with that. I want you to know that I love you. I love you. And Sean is gone, and Kenny is on. Thank you very much, and may you enjoy the rest of it. Thank you. Sandy Point people, are you ready for change? Yeah, we ready. Come tell we ready. Big dream Mafia, are you ready for change? Yeah, we ready. Long time we ready. We had enough for Shawnee, because it is down lazy. So on election day, it's getting all the way. Who you voting for? Yeah, yeah, Who you voting for? Yeah, yeah, Who you voting for? Yeah, yeah, Rock for him for me. Who you voting for? Yeah, yeah, Who you voting for? Yeah, yeah, Who you voting for? Yeah, yeah, and labor all the way. Big fam neighbor, are you ready for change? Yeah, we ready. Long 
and we ready. Number five one better. John Richard be fire. Support to Kenny, cause he gon' look for we. Who you voting for? Who you voting for? Who you voting for? Who you voting for? What for he for? thank Kenny Douglas, His Excellency, for that passionate presentation. As it's clearly seen in the way he presents, that there is a deep love for Sandy Point. There's a love affair going on between Kenneth Douglas and Sandy Point. And therefore, I'm asking the people of constituency number five to give Kenneth Douglas a chance. Sean is no leader. Sean leads a party that won four seats in the last election. In a coalition government of three parties, he controls the majority of seats. And when the question was asked of who should be prime minister, and Sean was asked, Sean bow his head and bow down, showing clearly that he does not have the gravitas of what it takes to be a leader. And that is why Pam is dead. And Sean went ahead just two days ago and sold out another seat from Pam to another party. And so therefore, Pam, which used to be a party that ran in eight seats is now only running, I think, in five seats. And I'm saying tonight, I'm going to a bit, a bit further, that Pam is only running in four seats because Patches Liebert is no Pam. Patches Liebert is no Pam. And so Pam is weak, dead on arrival as a party has nothing new to offer to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, not ready for leadership, not ready for prime time, has not brought anything new, refreshing to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And that is why we must reject Sean as the leader and Pam as a party. And so let's move on, comrades, to our next speaker. And the man who is going to win big, not just big, but bigger, in constituency number three, the constituency of France. That constituency received another endorsement today from Sam Conder, the Honorable Sam Conder, something that many did not expect to happen. So it shows, therefore, that Akila Nisbet has no chance in constituency number three. She really is just filling a spot, a spot that will never be filled by any other except, except the sake it's need this Labour Party. And so I want to welcome tonight the candidate, the next representative to continue to win bigger and bigger for the people of constituency number three, the man with the plan to take the constituency forward, the honorable, Congress Mena. Let us welcome him. Pleasant good evening to everyone and welcome again 
to a next Labour Next Gen SKN virtual public meeting. It's always a pleasure for us to be here sharing our ideas and our views to you, the wonderful people of St. Kitts and Nevis. We are on the crux of, uh, crux of a general election on June 5th. And we are here to solicit your support for a next-gen SKN administration. In constituency number three, there is a choice to be made. We are not going to blow off anybody because we are not playing against a fair rival. And later I'll speak about some of those things. So there's a choice to be made. And the questions must be asked in constituency number three. A constituency that has supported the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party for decades and decades and deserve someone in government who will fight for them and stand up for them. So the question must be asked, who will be a stronger representative? Who will work hardest? Who will not have to run to somebody for them to make a decision or to put them up in front to talk to a group of young men? I want to make a distinction here that you can use to make your decision as to who will work hardest for the people of constituency number three. Because we can compare. I was once a candidate vying for the seat in constituency number three before I became a parliamentarian. I had just over one year before the election. The young lady who is contesting the seat now has had almost four years before a general election. So let us compare those two periods of time, just over one year for Conrad Maynard and almost four years for Akita Nisbet. So what did Conrad do in one year leading up to the 2015 election? We built a greenhouse in the St. Johnson village area. We repainted the entire Dr. William Connor Primary School. We refenced the entire Patsy Allers Playfield. We resurfaced Wigley Avenue. That's the one with the Dr. William Connor Primary School on it. We resurfaced Walwyn Avenue. That's the one that we call the Democrat Road. We lighted the play field in Lankiel, such that for the first time, the Trafalgar South Stars could practice in the evening on the field. We were able to have a night cricket league. We built bus stops. We went up to the Lagreed area and we started townhouses for the people of constituency number three. We built the multi-million dollar road project in the Buckley's housing extension. All of the roads north of the bypass road up in Buckley's were initiated by yours truly. We built sidewalks from West Farm to Boyd's. We built a play field leveled into a hill, getting the play field. We built pavilions and we built bathrooms. We renovated the Palmetto Point Community Center, completely renovated it. We renamed streets after iconic people in the constituency. We cleaned up camps from all of the old cars that were down there. And on and on, we did many projects and remember, just over one year. Well, let's look at the caretaker for the last 
almost four years. I want you to look in your mind and around the constituency to see what has been done for the constituency in the last four years. I'll give you a second. Walk to your mind. See what has happened. Nothing has happened to Patsy Allers. Nothing has happened to Lyme Keel. Nothing has happened within the constituency. No greenhouses built, they abandoned. No farmers helped. No small businesses helped. Nothing extra done in Boyd's except to continue piece of the play field and bring outside persons to do it. But one thing that did happen in the four years, which started about December of 2019, is that a road was started. And do you know where that road led to? To the gate of Akila Nisbet. So in just over one year, you have Conris Maynard being the envy of the country by delivering on projects and assistance to people in just over one year. I didn't mention the numerous businesses that were given assistance and started and funding. And then you have Akila Nisbet, whose only project completed to date in the community, the only project is to build a road to her gate. A road that is on a private development. So the comparison is stark. You have someone who could actually get things done and someone who will say that they can get things done. We don't know when. Don't be fooled. Additionally, as we are in the campaign season, I am the one who faces the people of the constituency. I interact with the young men, the groups, and I take their questions and I engage with them on the policies and ideas and plans that we have. But our competitor uses Sir Len Harris, who is the go-to guy to speak with the guys, uses other people while the caretaker stays in the background. That is not leadership we deserve in constituency number three. We deserve a strong leader who will stand to ensure that the faith that the people of constituency number three have placed in the labor party will go rewarded. And so I won't be long tonight. Just wanted to provide that comparison this evening. That one has shown that they can deliver. They have delivered and will deliver bigger for you. While one other has been there for almost four years and don't have a trophy to show. You know, I'm always amazed. Constituency number three is a labor constituency. No one can doubt that. And you as a new young candidate coming in and you can't prove that you can influence your government to get things done. You can't move the government of which your leader in your party is the prime minister? Well, that shows a level of weakness that you are unable to represent the people of constituency number three. And so I wanted to provide that comparison for you so that you can take it and make a decision. Who will be the better representative for the people of constituency number three? And as I wrap, you know we are meeting people every day, every moment, every hour right now. And I had the opportunity to meet a lot of folks today. 
And I want to reiterate the commitment that I've given. I was just in a fam by a family home and they have a lot of young people in the family who simply want to own a piece of the rock. Simply want an opportunity to own their own home. They have been trying for a long time. And we won't deny that there are many who didn't get the opportunity. But this time, we are going to ensure that those families that had missed out the last time will take top priority. And so as I wrap this evening, I want to encourage you to give your support to someone who can win bigger for you. You know I know how to win. You know I know how to succeed. You know I know how to get things done. My record has shown that. And so I ask you to join once again, me in the Next Gen SKN movement and elect Conris Maynard, re-elect Conris Maynard in constituency number three so that I can win bigger for you. I love you constituency number three. I love you St. Kitts and Nevis. Have a wonderful evening.
want to thank the Honorable Congress Maynard for his presentation, and he's definitely winning bigger. I want to recognize somebody tonight, Cedric Labour Clark, as his Facebook page says. He today is in turn at the hospital, and he had a procedure. But I want to wish him all the best, and I think all of us should wish him all the best as he gets better to join the campaign once again. So I want to give a shout out to him and let him know that our prayers are with him. I want to say something to you, the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, that the Team Unity Government or concoction is so desperate that they're now saying to the people of this country that they're going to build a brand new state-of-the-art hospital. That is a big laugh, a big joke. For the last five years or more, we have been saying that we will have to build a brand new hospital since the last election. So more than five years. I already have the plan, I have the plan that I showed on Freedom FM one day. The analysis has been done and the hotel and the hospital will be built under the next gen SKN. But they have done some polls and they have recognized that the people in St. Kitts and Nevis are voting for a new hospital. And so in an act of desperation, they are coming to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis now and saying that they are going to build a brand new hospital. As the young lady said in the labor show of last year, red flag for that, a red flag for that. Just like Eugene Hamilton heard me speak about a brand new health center in St. Peter's. He put up a big sign. He's going to be a brand new health center. And all I got is a big picture on a piece of board. Red flag for that. Red flag for that. He heard me speak about completing the pavilion and stadium for the Connery Play Field. Every year he told the Connery people that it is in the budget to be completed. Five years have gone, nothing has been done. And he has said to the Connery people that it's coming soon, coming soon. Red flag for that, red flag for that. He said that he can develop Bearfords into a farming district, our area once again. Five years have gone and Eugene Hamilton has not delivered just because he heard me spoke about um, Bayfords. Red flag for that again, red flag for that. And so we are saying to the people of constituency number eight that you have been let down, denied. I have a list here and you can see clearly this is Eugene Hamilton's plan, manifesto, local manifesto from 2015 given to me by one of his former big supporters. And when you read it, not one thing Eugene Hamilton has accomplished. In Keys, we direct the road used by heavy equipment. Support local villagers embarking on business of, of businesses linked to turtle nesting. Guarantee the building of a football and other sporting facilities. Nothing done. Connery ensure the football facilities completed. Nothing done. Ensure the construction of a health center, nothing done. Provide school bus for the children, we did that already. Give financial support to local small businesses and ventures, nothing done. Kayon, construct a center of excellence named after Ison Wharton. Can you imagine that? Using this name to gain votes, nothing done. To complete the St. Mary's Park Sporting Complex, nothing done. To complete it, it has not been completed. He sent a battle over there to dig out dirt three weeks before an election. Construct a basketball facilities in Upper Kayon, nothing done. Turn St. Mary's Park into indoor facility. I passed the court, St. Mary's Park recently, and they still have up wire fence. And in this document, he's talking about he's going to make it an indoor facility. This is a joke, nothing done. 
repeal land for debt in Kayon and other affected areas. Instead of repealing the land for debt, as he said, he sold the land to foreigners in Kayon. Nothing done. Of these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, all he has done is half of the 16 things that he promised. Eugene Hamilton has failed the people of constituency number eight, and I have the document to do it, to show it. This is the document with 16 major promises in each district of constituency number eight, and Eugene Hamilton has accomplished half out of 16. I think if you were in school and you were to get half out of 16, your parents might have told you, when you're doing nothing at all in school and if you're interested, you might go as, a, as well go look for. Eugene Hamilton, you have failed the people in constituency number eight. And to wrap up the last thing he said, he said that the reason why he's not talking about health is because he delegated health to Wendy Phipps. Which senior minister would delegate the most significant and important ministry, especially in this COVID-19 time, to a junior? Unless the senior is weak, does not know what he's doing, being pushed over, rolled over, and being pushed on the back burner. He does not know what he's doing. They do not trust him because they think he's a weak leader and he has demonstrated it. And he said he dedicated everything to agriculture. But in agriculture, look at what has happened. Animals died, the sheep, the cattle, the goats died under Eugene Hamilton. The greenhouses, he said, he would bring, he would strengthen, destroyed in 2017, nothing done. And that is why we are saying in constituency number eight, and I have laid out everything to you, the people of constituency number eight, that we will once again make the constituency vibrant. I have to say that and bring this man pamphlet before you to show you a half on 16 is a big, big failure. And that is why the people in constituency number eight are saying they want change. And they have decided that the only way they can win is to buy the constituency. And so I'm saying to the people of constituency number eight, say to Eugene Hamilton, too little, too late, but we'll take your money and vote you out. Too little, too late, but we'll take your money and vote you out. And let's move on now. I want to bring to the microphone in this grand public virtual meeting, a man, a leader who has led not only in St. Kitts and Nevis, but on the Caribbean level and international level. He led the fight against HIV AIDS. He was also responsible for helping to establish CAFA that is so important now in COVID-19. He also led us out of the financial crisis that began in 20, 2008 and was asked by Commonwealth to chair a meeting that dealt with dealing with economies during that period. He's a man that has shown tremendous leadership that has taken us from 40 odd percent of poverty to right now when we left in 2015, we were number one in the OECS. That is a leader with a track record. And that is why we are saying that he's leading the next gen SKN to take the reins of government to serve our people and to serve our people well, to take us upward, onward into the 21st century and become once again, number one, in the OECS, in the Caribbean, and a model that all can look at. I bring before you the leader of our party, the right honorable Dr. Denzel Llewellyn Douglas. Let's welcome him with a rousing round of applause.
good night to everyone. And I wish myself to thank you for coming out to hear us once again at this virtual public meeting. I want to thank our supporters who have been there with us over the last five years and who now in the final 14 days of this long campaign to bring emancipation, to bring freedom to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I wish to remind us again tonight that not only is this campaign all about you, but the intention, the desire, the mandate that is being sought by the next gen SKNT is to ensure that our services are all about you, the good people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Those of you who are resident here and those of you who are citizens of our country, those of you who are resident here, I believe and I hope that we have succeeded in making you feel comfortable as you have reside, have you as you have been residing with us for many, many years or for very many months. We welcome you and we consider you to be an integral part of what St. Kitts and Nevis is today. Whether you have come from far and distant lands, from India, from Russia, from the Middle East, from Europe, Specifically, no matter where you would have come from, whether it is from the neighboring countries in the Eastern Caribbean or the wider Caribbean region, we welcome you and we thank you for being part of us tonight. Those of you who are following on the internet, I know that the Labour Massive in particular, you are wishing that you were here here in St. Kitts and Nevis, to be on the streets in our public meetings. But my dear, my dearest, there are no public meetings on the streets anymore. Labor took the meetings from the streets all around the island to a virtual public meeting state. We were the first to do that because when the prime minister was down in Newton ground with his supporters after announcements were made that we should be social distancing and physical distancing. We took heed to that very important warning, brought our own campaign from the streets into the virtual space, and we have continued it up to today. But alas, you would have seen only on Monday night that even in situations when COVID-19 disease caused by a virus was already here in St. Kitts and Nevis, when 15 persons were diagnosed with the virus, COVID-19, there was on Monday night, Monday night of this week, the very night that the election was announced and there in a community center, again, in Newtown, we saw the prime minister himself in a crowd of people, far more than 50 people, a public meeting, no, physical and social distancing at all. And the prime minister himself, well, the former prime minister himself was not even wearing a face mask. That is the kind of nonsense that we are seeing in St. Kitts today. 
How then can the prime minister or the former prime minister be saying that he's serious about the control of the spread, serious about curtailing the transmission of the virus, when he himself is not practicing exactly what has been prescribed for us, what has been mandated, what has been scheduled by the relative legislation in order to curtail the spread of this virus. Prime Minister and Minister Leibert, both of them don't really care about what is happening to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And that is why I say again, it's all about you, the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And that is why we are here. We are here to make the case that this government is an uncaring government. The government has failed the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. The government does not deserve another term. The government does not intend to provide you with the necessities that you need to advance yourselves in a modern state, in a modern democracy. Members of the government are simply interested in getting their pockets fatter and fatter, fatter of the backs of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And that is why I say to you, the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, if you were to be asked the question, what is it that is for you in the second term of a Harris government? The answer is absolutely nothing for you. It is all for Harris and his family. That is what it is. Nothing for you in the second term. All for Harris and his family. The crumbs from the table are for you. But the fattest calf that there is, is for Harris and his family and his friends and their families. Nothing is it for you. I think it was on Monday night, I asked you the question. If you were to be asked again, what have you received over the last five years, especially when the government promised that it was going to share the returns of this land to you and others. You will answer nothing. Have you got enough? Have you got your fair share? The agenda and the mantra at that time was fair share for you. Five years ago, we will give you your fair share. Today, I ask you five years after, have you the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, have you received your fair share? And the answer I am certain must be no. But if you ask, has Harris or have Harris and his family, have they received their fair share? The answer will be, they have not only received their fair share, but they have received their fair share and more because they got yours as well as theirs. And that is why I said to you tonight, this election is all about you. The future is all about you. The next gen SKN labor team is to serve you, the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, and your interest. And so here we are on the fourth day of this very serious political election campaign. It is the general election that will signal a one-term government for Harris and his team. While you, the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, 
take back your government from them because they have wasted five years of serving you by looking after themselves. And that is why tonight I say, I am so pleased that we already are down to day four of this campaign. 14 more days to go before emancipation, before liberation, before we kick this government out and bring in the next gen SKN team to look after your interest. Day one was very exciting because after many, many months of waiting to hear the date for the upcoming election, we were told that it was going to be on the 5th of June and there was a jubilation in the land. But look at the image, look at the demeanor of Harris in delivering that statement that named the election day. Very much, I think, in a sorrowful state, withdrawn, very much, it would appear, ashamed of himself that he was forced to call the election at a time when even after five and a half years, he was still not yet ready to call the elections. And that is why we always said, <clears throat> no matter how much he delays it, no matter how much he thought that he would try to change the boundaries again, no matter how much he has frustrated using the courts to deny the people their rightful boundaries of 2015. No matter how much he has tried to lock up people, locking up Leon Nathan Nelson, simply because he does not want to be challenged in this particular race, not because he has found all kinds of reason to put off naming the date of the elections. He had to call the date eventually, and he knew all along he would lose. And so far, therefore, have, has gone, and he is definitely losing this election. And so the one has gone. The two, we saw labor mobilized, rolling out its paraphernalia, making sure that the big labor roller was ready to roll. And so we see the labor massive getting themselves ready. Offices open all over in each constituency and people getting ready to settle down to what is going to become the most significant election ever in our history, I believe. And I emphasize again, no matter how much he tries to cover us, no matter how much he introduces his state of emergency, no matter whether it is 12 months or six months, the end is in sight and there's only one outcome and that is a victory for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, a victory for the St. Kitts and Nevis Labour Party, a victory against wickedness, corruption, nepotism, selfishness, robbing people of their rights, a victory over all of those things, and soon that day will come. Day three was in fact a very important day. But before I go to day three, we saw what was happening in terms of the further dismantling of the PLP and unity. And why Rastafan came on the social media, Facebook Live, and made a presentation that touched the hearts of well over a thousand people, assisted on Labour's platform. 
Again, I want to thank Guaya for coming out and very boldly stating the situation as he sees it, making it clear that he went a particular direction five years ago, but he was on the wrong path, in the wrong direction, with the wrong people. And today he is saying, he's rejecting that past and he is turning a new leaf, supporting Jeffrey Hanley in constituency number one, definitely removing the administration of Timothy Harris and removing Harris himself as the prime minister as he looked forward to a brighter future for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. So day two was in fact a very, very important day as we trod on, as we tread on in this particular campaign. And then day three, we saw meeting with the COVID-19 task force. I want to thank again, Mr. Samuel, the chairman of the COVID-19 task force. I to thank the distinguished CMO, um, Dr. Laws. I want to thank, of course, the distinguished uh, medical chief of staff at the JNF, that is Dr. Cameron Wilkinson for taking that meeting with Dr. Drew, the chairman of our party and myself. We made it clear that we were disappointed in the opposition, the parliamentary opposition in particular, not being invited to sit as one of the working groups with members of the task force being a very important part of the institution of the governance of our country. And we believe very strongly that because someone did not have a handshake with a former prime minister, that that should not deprive the parliamentary opposition from having its rightful place in and among the stakeholders of our country in this very important management of the COVID-19 pandemic. I want to say again that we have reaffirmed the right of every citizen, the right of every citizen to, ex to exercise the franchise that he has, won by a lot of bloodshed in this country, a lot of struggles in this country. The right to vote has been won. And that right to vote cannot be taken away from any citizen of this country who is registered to vote simply because he is ill from a particular illness. And that has been confirmed and reaffirmed in our meeting that was held on Wednesday with the COVID-19 task force. And we also emphasize that here because even though people according to the public health laws have to be quarantined, that does not take away their right at all to vote in an election that I warned the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, I warned the government several weeks ago, do like other countries, make provision for people to vote, for people to be able to exercise their franchise by voting. You can't tell them that they cannot vote because they have an illness. We take people from the hospitals and take them to vote because they want to vote, it's their right to vote. And likewise, there are regulations and stipulations in place here in this country for anyone who may or may not have the virus, but who nevertheless has to practice social distancing and otherwise 
and sanitization normally. They have the right, after doing all of that, to vote in their country if they have that right to vote by being registered to vote. And as I said, I'm very pleased that we were able to establish this important fact with the members of the COVID-19 task force. And as we said to them there, don't let any government, no one who does not have the authority, don't let any party politics prevent them from doing their work. And we were very pleased to be reassured that they are not politicians. They are servants of the people serving the country, St. Kitts and Nevis, sworn to that specific duty when the job was being taken up at all levels. And so again, I use this opportunity to thank and commend all of the frontline essential workers who have kept us relatively safe here in this country during COVID-19 and the management of COVID-19. And so we are now after day three into day four. And what excitement today we had in day four. Another nail, another nail, another nail being driven in the coffin of this unity, this functional government. When Sam Conder went to the airwaves and spoke so eloquently to the entire world, spoke eloquently to the world as he registered his disgust and dissatisfaction and regrets and how disappointed he was to see all the hopes and dreams of seven years ago, back in 2013, when he became a founding member of the PLP. How those hopes have been dashed aside because of a corrupt, wicked, selfish, self-serving prime minister. That is what was being said to the heroes around the world today. Eloquent presentation filled with emotion, filled with deep feelings of regrets and hope and aspirations, however, for better. And so I want to commend Sam Conder for taking a stand, taking a stand and driving another nail in the coffin of this dysfunctional government called itself unity government. And so my dear people, we are now here in the latter part of the four. When in this public meeting before me tonight, we had the endorsement of three of our next gen candidates. I want to thank Kristen Brown for so eloquently speaking as a young people, being so much affected by the role model of what Leon Nathan Nelson is. I felt it for her as she spoke from her heart. Leon, we love you. Not only Kristen Brown that loves you. We all love you, Leon. We deserve to be loved. You're a different person from the man whom you will defeat in 14 days time. And I said to you, my dear people, my dear young people of Molyneux, of Phillipses, of Lodge, Village of Borio, Lodge Project of Atlas. I said to you, give young Leon Natter Nelson a chance. Give him a chance to serve your interest, to look after your dreams and your aspirations, to make it possible that you can achieve here in your country of birth. And to say to you, it is not everything in this country is Harris and Harris and Harris again. Leon Nathan Nelson is a different personality, a different person, a different servant. And so I said to you, my dear people, young people in particular, it was good 
that you have seen this, the endorsements of young people like you in the person of Leon Natter Nelson of constituency number seven. I want to thank young Wichley Gums. Wichley Gums is one of my favorites. Young man, brilliant young man. I remember sitting um, at the Central Bank Auditorium many years ago when he, when Wichley and a young guy, Ryan, I think his name is, young, brilliant chap. Two of them held the audience spellbound with how much these young men had achieved, basically from nothing. Which really, your endorsement of Steve Wensford has done wonders for the young people of our country. They have recognized that when the president of the student council in the highest institution of learning here in our country steps forward on a platform and endorses a man. It speaks volumes for young people. And I, saw, I said to you, my dear people, follow the leader, which really governs. People of number four, follow the leadership of which really governs. Young people of number four, Wichley Gums has said to you, this man, His Excellency, Steve Wentzford, is a capable and proper person to replace Lindsey Grant to represent you in our parliament over the next five years. And I hope you will take the advice and the invitation given to you by young Wichley as he endorsed Steve Bensford there tonight. And then charming Vincia Douglas. She had to be a Douglas. Endorsing Kenny or Kenneth Kenny David Douglas. David, David, David Douglas. David who again will slay the giant in Sandy Point. I am not getting into any fight between the people of Sandy Point at all. I stay in out, I from St. Paul's. But I say to you, the people of Sandy Point have come to realize that the present representative, Sean Richards, is a waste of time for 15 years took away the laptop computers from your children. Now today, what do you have to do your work at home under COVID-19? What do you have? Giving you a tablet. What tablet? Tablets are not working. So nothing has been done. Look at the state of Sandy Point where we left it. What has been advanced since labor left that, country, that part of the country five years ago? Laziness is the dominant adjective of, uh, I should say, laziness is the dominant descriptive word that you would want to use with the Deputy Prime Minister, Sean Richards. Carnival, yes, fine. But sitting down to work, none. Was offered the prime ministership by the governor general and it back out of it said I became the things there. I could only wine and die. That cannot be what your representative must be. You need a hard working man like Kenny who is serious, who speaks loudly and clearly to the ambitions of our young people here in St. Kitts and Nevis. That is why I thank Vincia who spoke eloquently from her heart in endorsing our young, brilliant champion, ambassador, teacher for life. Ambassador is one of his latest um, positions when he was sent off to Cuba to represent the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. 
never before in the history of our relationship with Cuba, so many people were trained in Cuba than under the ambassadorial um, relationship that we had under Kenny Douglas. And so I want to really thank these young people for endorsing these three next-gen SKN candidates. My time is almost up. I don't want to go beyond 11.30 in track. I think I came on too late. But nevertheless, just let me take another seven or so minutes of your time. And I want to really commend the team for standing up so far to the rigors of the campaign. Many of them are experiencing the campaign for the first time. But I believe that being aware that what they are doing is preparing them to serve you and your interests, the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, I am certain that they are, each, they are, each of them, enjoying the campaign to date. I just want to say to you, my dear people, that we are here as a team because we care. Labor cares. Douglas cares. Douglas not only cares now, Douglas always cared. From the day in my own village as a little boy, being sent by my father to write letters for a number of our people here who were not literate and whose children were abroad, especially in England, or whose wives were abroad, or husbands, sorry, were abroad in England, or whose fathers, parents were abroad in England. I wrote letters for them to communicate across the waters. I grew up as a child of service. I grew up in my little village as a child of service, always serving. Left school, taught for one year, went off to university, got a Bachelor of Science, Biochemistry and Biology, came back, taught for two more years, then went on back to the university and studied medicine for four and a half years. Came back. It has always been service. Douglas cares. Labor cares. The SKN team, it cares. That's why we are here today, putting ourselves really for service to our people. It is because I care. Why I want to highlight just two things to illustrate how much we care. When we recognized COVID-19 had struck, many, many of our people thrown out of jobs. Many, many, many people cut hours, taxi men at home, those in the restaurants at home, hotels closed down, Factories closed down. Buses stopped running. No one is moving. We agonized over that with our people. Government didn't really care. Government responded very late to the warnings of COVID-19. I heard the, Prime, the Deputy Prime Minister myself said, we will not do anything until the virus comes into St. Kitts. How foolhardy is that? How foolhardy is that? Would not do anything until the, the virus is here. What one should say is that we will do everything to keep the virus out of here. But instead of that, scrambled the same afternoon, our children are in schools. The same afternoon, one o'clock, 1.30, when the announcement was made that we've had two, three, four cases. That's when the children were racing like hell to go home from the schools. 
because the deputy prime minister, the minister of health said, not one thing will be done by this government until the virus comes. How foolhardy can we be? And so having recognized where we were, we said, no, we have to help. I want to thank my colleagues, Marcella, Steve, Jeff, started the Next Gen SKN Cares Initiative. Millions of dollars poured in for food. Even the little money that we had for our campaign team had to go in trying to help the people of St. Kitts and Nevis because we care. That is what we are about. We care. And while we care, the Prime Minister takes our Chief Medical Officer down to Newton Guam Primary School. Not even one man who inside the had a mask. No social distancing. Woman singing and bawling out your she voice and all kind of particles coming out. Nobody cares. That is why I said to you, if it is one reason that we ask you to give your support, put your ex to the hand for labor in the next election, it is because labor cares. This team cares. Douglas cares, my dear people. And that is why we are here with you tonight, because we care. We care and we want to ensure that our people's lives are better. And so I said to you, next week, when we would have, when we would have brought our manifesto and our policy documents, I shall elaborate what we mean by we really care. We care for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And I want to make the point now that no person in this country ever again should die. No one should die for lack of proper medical care. No matter what disease you have, no matter what part of your body you have your cancer, no matter how much hypertension or diabetes you have, no matter how much your foot has become gangrenous, you must not die for lack of health care in this country. You shall not die for lack of health care under a new labor administration. Your child will not die in the hospital as a neonate because it does not have the adequate treatment to keep it alive when it was born alive. That will not happen in the next gen SKN care. Because we believe that things can be better. No one shall die. No one should lie down in the same place that a monkey is lying down to take an MRI test. No, it will not happen under labor. And it is very important that we emphasize that. We care, Douglas cares. That is why we say, you shall not lie down in the same place where a monkey lie down to do an MRI, because that does not show care. We care, Douglas cares, Labour cares, the next gen SKN team, it cares, my dear people. And so we shall have state-of-the-art medical facility. Diagnostic tools will be provided. Surgeons will be provided. Not only general surgeons, but specialist surgeons as well. Not only general practitioners, general physicians, but specialist physicians as well. And when you cannot get it here in St. Kitts and Nevis, we will bring them from where they are, or we will send you there. No more people shall die for lack of care here in St. Kitts. And, needless. and I want to make that absolutely clear for our people here tonight. My dear people, we shall make sure that our people in this new dispensation, because there are several crises that have arisen from this COVID-19 pandemic.
pandemic. And I want to say to you, my dear people, finally, we shall put in place a national economic recovery program. We already have a council. We spoke of our vision in the past, creating a sovereign wealth fund, which would have been right now been adequate to serve our interests because of this pandemic. We shall revive our economy. We shall make sure that there is unemployment benefit coming from our social security so that no one would be able to be turned away because the government will ensure that every single man, woman and child is ensured with regard to insurance, health, and also in your social security contribution. We shall make sure that in the new thrust to economic development, cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency, blockchain technology would become critical parts of the new economy that we shall be creating. And we shall twin our citizenship by investment program with our cryptocurrency, and we will take it to the next level where it will never be reached again by any of our competitors. We care, labor cares, Douglas cares. That is why we are here tonight with you, my dear people. We want to serve you. Five years you have given them. You've had the opportunity to compare on contracts. How is does not have the capacity? He goes to meetings in the region, that is what his own colleagues told me. Even one of them told me that today. He falls asleep or he leaves the room and go back somewhere. Nobody knows where he goes. We want people who care, people who will serve your interest because our service, the service of the next gen SKN is all about you, the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. I love you. I love you very, very, very much. Thank you and good night. I love you, my dear people. God bless you. Let the love go up with the hearts. Thank you.
shine bright And I have a message for them youth, yeah Victory is coming December 9 So now we fight them with love, win them with love Meet them with love, we moving forward Nobody can move way on the road to progress. We must tread. This labor pride we can't lose it. So now we fight them with love, win them with love, beat them with love. We moving forward. Shine bright, and I have a message for the mute. Yeah, victory is coming December 9th. Never.